Hey everyone, Guppy Girl here and welcome back to the very messy fish room. As usual, I am always doing like five projects at a time and I would like to share one of my small victories with you guys, which is my successful, finally successful culture of ostracods. In the video, I will be using the words ostracod and sea shrimp interchangeably because they both are describing the same organism. Ostracod is just the more scientific name and then sea shrimp is the common name. From my observations, these species utilize almost every bit of the tank except for the open midwater. If there's predators, of course they won't be noticeable like on the glass or anything like that and they'll be hiding in the substrate, but for the most part in this little jar, They've been really enjoying hanging up at the top near the roots and on the dockweed. Just anywhere where there's a drop of water, they will find their way to that area um, and they'll be happy there. They've also been really prevalent on the sides of the glass. Um, I believe that's because of all the biofilm that's building up and they're grazing on that. And they also hang out at the bottom of the tank. If you have fish in the tank, then you will most likely never see these guys because they will be hiding under the gravel or substrate, basically hiding from the fish because they will become little snacks otherwise. Most people find these in shrimp tanks because these guys eat basically the same stuff that your shrimp will eat, and they can cohabitate with shrimp and not be a nuisance to them. If you start seeing a lot of sea shrimp in your tank and you have fish in the tank, then it probably means you're overfeeding the fish and these sea shrimp are basically getting a population explosion because they're eating all of the excess fish food that's falling into the substrate. This whole video was based on my observations of the sea shrimp I have. Depending on what you have, they might eat something different. They range from being little predators to herbivores to scavengers. I believe mine are just detritivores. I've never seen them actually eat anything alive. They only eat dead stuff, yeah, even with plants. These guys are 100% plant safe, at least the ones I have been culturing. From my research, I've uh, read that they are supposed to eat algae, diatoms, bacteria, mold, and um, detritus. So, big question, what do I do with my seed shrimp now that I have a ton? I actually feed them to my fish and this isn't something I do often. There is a rumor that it will cause um, like uh, clog up your fish inside basically and constipate them and kill them um, because the, the shell is just so hard that the fish can't um, digest it or break it when they eat it. Um, this could be true. I have no idea. I honestly haven't had any problems yet, but I only feed them to guppy fry because they're just so tiny. Sea shrimp come in a variety of sizes. Um, the species that I have is smaller than a Moina daphnia. Um, to give you scale, it's not much smaller, but it is smaller. So they are pretty dang tiny. And for me, this is a treat for my fish. Uh, I think they have a lot of fun hunting down the sea shrimp. And I can definitely feed them, you know, a bunch of sea shrimp and then come back to the tank like an hour later. And they'll still all be scavenging around trying to find stuff. To me, it looks like they're having a good time hunting the food down for a few hours, and that makes me happy to see. Now, as much as I like to feed these to guppies, I don't think it's the best idea, and that's because guppies aren't meant to be full-fledged predators. Although they have um, teeth-like structures in the back of their throat to help them chew food, it's not really meant to be breaking hard shells. Fish that would find seed shrimp as a food source would be micropredators, and I'm thinking something along the lines of crocodile toothpick fish or scarlet batiatus, something with teeth um, that has the right equipment to basically break shells um, because they are predators. These are two fish that I'm actually considering um, keeping if I can create the right setup for them. So how do you acquire sea shrimp? Because sometimes they just show up in the tank without us even knowing it until we start tearing down the tank or we take out all the fish and then we start seeing these little guys. Sea shrimp get spread around from different tanks because they are hitchhikers. Now because they're so so tiny it's really easy for them to hitchhike on aquarium plants or in um, the rock wool if you get like a 
a potted plant. So these little guys, you can get them from other people's tanks. There is a rumor that if you see seed shrimp in your tank, that that means your tank is fully cycled and it's a very healthy ecosystem. Um, I do want to just say that you can have a healthy ecosystem tank and not have seed shrimp. And the opposite, you can have a very unhealthy, unbalanced tank and still have seed shrimp in your aquarium because these guys are bulletproof. They are super, super hardy. Many species of freshwater seed shrimp live in vernal pools. Now, if you don't know what a vernal pool is, it's basically a puddle of water that will form when it rains, um, in like usually a rainy season, and then this puddle will last for a few months or maybe weeks and eventually dry out um, until the next rain happens. And so these creatures have adapted in a way to withstand this drought. Sea shrimp have a special egg that can withstand getting fully dried out, and basically this is so they can re-emerge in the next um, wet period or wet season. So when it rains again and the pool's filled up with water again, these eggs will rehydrate and then hatch new baby seed shrimp. And then the next generation will form from there. My first encounter with seed shrimp was as a child. Uh, part of our backyard was basically all concrete and in this concrete, it wasn't completely smooth. There was like a divot that could hold, I would say at least two gallons of water. And because it was fully concrete, if water filled into this little divot, it stayed there until it completely evaporated. So what happened was during all times of the year, these neighborhood cats just loved to poop in this ditch for some reason. And then come around summer when we're watering plants and stuff, the runoff water would eventually get into this ditch and fill it up over time. Now, as you can imagine, that is a really nasty green water with cat poop and it was just gross looking and to me I was very fascinated when I walked by it one day and noticed that there was these little um circle thingies moving around in the water and um basically I used to collect the seed shrimp in these little containers and leave them out in the sun and um in the summer heat these seed shrimp would heat up it was like at least 90 degrees for part of our summers and then being in full sunlight these little containers got extremely hot i'm sure but the sea shrimp were doing great they were thriving in these little con in this like tiny little container like a critter keeper i think is what it was and it couldn't have been more than a gallon maybe even less than that and they were thriving and then eventually the water would dry up in the container and i would add new water and the sea shrimp would just re-emerge like miraculously. I thought that was really amazing and that's basically what drew me to them as a child was just like how do they do that? Now as an adult and um, doing more research on them now I understand why but um, that is probably like one of the first experiences I ever had with like small aquatic animals that drew me into aquariums now i know having sea shrimp in a little container isn't exactly an aquarium but as a child that was that was it for me that was like the highlight of my summer so that was my first experience with sea shrimp and probably what got me into fish keeping and now doing all kinds of aquarium related stuff so thank you sea shrimp but that whole story uh, is to say that sea shrimp are extremely hardy and they can withstand a lot of uh, climates and temperatures that your fish cannot. And especially because of the way they have this egg that can be dehydrated, it makes it extremely difficult to completely eradicate them from your fish tank. So your best bet is if you have sea shrimp and you don't want them anymore, you will need to get some kind of micro predator to hunt them down. It's not a permanent uh, extermination solution, but it is a way of uh, population control. As an aquarist, I really like having sea shrimp because they are just another layer of life that I can add to my tank, helping me get a little bit closer to a more natural ecosystem. All the products that I used to take this footage will be down in the description if you're interested. There's Amazon links to those, no affiliate links, just normal Amazon links. 
In the future, I will be coming out with a video of how I culture ostracods along with copepods since you kind of get them both together and it's hard to separate them. So that video will be coming out hopefully soon. Comment down below and let me know if you like sea shrimp or if you don't. And until then, see you in the next one.